here are five common editing mistakes that amateur photographers make and also how to fix them because it would kind of be dumb if you just pointed out the mistakes without a solution. So let's go. My name is Pai. I've been fortunate to create multiple successful companies in the photography space. I'm a photographer, but even more so, I would say I'm an educator and frameworks person. My specialty, making complex subjects easy for you to master right here on Adorama TV. Friends, you know the drill. I like to get straight into things. Now we're gonna be using Lightroom Classic, but these principles apply regardless of the editing applications that you're using. So let's dive in. Number one, stop overcooking your raw edits, bro. Look, I know you're excited. You get that dope raw file into Lightroom, and yes, I just said dope, but you get that thing into Lightroom and you just master blaster the shiz out of your contrast. I should say, by the way, don't worry because I've made every one of these mistakes. So I got you both in making the mistake and also the solution. Okay, so a couple suggestions here. First, turn on the highlight and clipping alert. If you're in Lightroom Classic, press J to do this. Second, I like to find my contrast through a combination of the tone curve and highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Next, you're gonna save contrast for the last and final adjustment to an image. And just a note here, if you're using presets like Visual Flow, we actually do just that. We leave contrast zeroed out on most presets and on top of that, you now have the amount slider for this intensity control. So boom, but you're like, but Pi, I'm not using visual flow. Well, yeah, the point of showing you that was to tell you that if you're creating or using your own presets, leave your contrast zeroed out. So dial in the look how it should be with contrast at zero. That way, when you apply to an image, it can now be a finishing touch. Okay, now, boom, I wanted to do the Xbox thing. If you know, comment below so I know we're on the same page. All right, number two, you got to fix that dust. It doesn't matter whether you're printing to an album or just posting to social media. Nothing ruins a beautiful professional image like leaving sensor dust marks in your photograph. And by the way, this is an easy fix. So again, from Lightroom, just press Q to grab the healing brush and nuke those little monsters. And little trick, by the way, if you are using the healing tool and you press T, so with it selected, press T, it'll bring up the tools overlay. You can actually turn on visualize spots. This will help you find those pesky hidden spots quite a bit easier. Though I'd only suggest doing this step if you're going to print. So doing it by eye is good enough for social media. Don't go through all this if you're you know, not gonna be printing. Number three, stop making out with mannequins. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but an actual client did that. Number three for real, bro, 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 bro. Avoid editing trends and filters that are not timeless. Now, what am I talking about? Well, what I would say is any editing style that we can trace back to a specific decade is no bueno. And what styles might that be, you might ask? Thank you for asking. Well, how about those beautifully hazy glamour shots of the 90s? Nerp. Or when everyone learned about selective color. That's just nasty. Or if you remember the more recent overcooked HDR days. I mean, this was just a few years back and some of us might actually still be stuck in those days. I understand. Look, I've done it all. Actually, I didn't do the glamour of the 90s and that kind of stuff. But look, stick to editing styles that are timeless. And in my final tip, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So number four, your giant watermarks are killing me, but not so softly. This one is brutal and I see it all the time. This amazing image that's just absolutely ruined by a gigantic watermark smacked right on top of it. And look, if you want to watermark your images, that's fine. Just include a classy little watermark in the corner that doesn't detract from your image. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, I don't want people to be stealing my photographs. My friend, I'm going to just be brutally honest for a second. Nobody likely wants to steal your images. You're just preventing the people that would actually enjoy that image and perhaps even sharing that image from doing so. Second, if people did want to steal it, there are actually plenty of AI solutions that will instantly remove your watermark from the image. Third, the only time you'll ever be able to get someone to pay damages for stealing an image is if it was used by a significant revenue generating corporation. And they kind of know better for the most part. But if that does happen, just contact your local IP lawyer. But look, in posting your images online, we're all dealing with some level of risk of our images being stolen or perhaps misused, but that's kind of the name of the game. We're doing it because of the eyeballs, because of the possibility of booking new clients, 
So don't go and destroy the chances of booking new clients and getting those eyeballs with giant watermarks. Because if you're that concerned, you probably shouldn't be posting those images online in the first place. Last but not least, number five, match your edit to the message within your images. This is how you keep things timeless. And it doesn't matter whether you want a modern feel or whether you want something more vintage like stock film. So long as you match the look of the edit to the message within the image, you're good. And I'll give you a couple examples of this. I shot this older couple in China in a rural village and the image screams to me filmic black and white. And guess what? It fits perfectly. Now, this couple brought a vintage car to their engagement photos and they were dressed to match the part. So honestly, I could choose any filmic style that I want to edit this and it's going to fit. Same thing with this couple, which for them, I opted for kind of a more bright and Fuji pastel feel on this beach photograph. But for an image like this one, which was shot with on-camera flash, a modern technique, well, it looks like a modern image. If I edit this and try to make it look like film, it's going to kind of look cheesy, like it doesn't fit, like it was a filter or something thrown on after the fact. So instead, what I'm going to do when I edit is lean into what's already there. And for this specific image, it's going to be a modern high color pop. All right, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed these tips. If you guys dig my style of education, be sure to check out our A to Z library of professional photography tutorials within SLA Launch Premium. Over 10,000 photographers throughout the world have used our education to level up to create six and seven figure photography businesses. So I promise you won't be disappointed. In the meantime, I'll see you guys back here next week. So do what you always do. Comment, let me know what you guys thought of the video. I read every one of your comments. I get ideas from your questions. So be sure to post them. Second, this is YouTube. So you know what to do. Hit the subscribe and ring that bell so I can keep my job and see you guys back here. Same time, same place next week on Adorama TV. Peace.